Um, so, hi, I'm Nikolai. I live in Sydney, uh, where Christmas is in June. Um, I work for a company called Ninefold, where we do all sorts of some stuff with uh, Rails deployment. Um, and um, I work actually in this thing. Uh, this is a um, screenshot from um, the Mac. And right now I have my sandwich every morning. Um, so I'm I'm a web developer, right? Um, I've been doing this uh, for a number of years, and uh, kind of got used to certain things. And um, I like how it works in there. When I saw first time web, it kind of made it make sense. Uh, you have elements like buttons, you have uh, ends, you have functions, and you connect them and uh, it's pretty simple. You can just uh, get going pretty quickly. Um, um, but what actually makes it so good is the super of concerns. Say they treat every screen pretty much as a separate web page. And in terms of web page, you have a page model, which represented by HTML, basically the structure of your page. Uh, then you have uh, CSS, which represent uh, how things look on page. And you have JavaScript for connecting things together and like orchestrating the behavior of this page. And in the end, you can look at it as a canonical case of MVC, right? Um, you, that's what basically makes it uh, so strong and sustainable technology. That's what makes uh, like whole web explored and we have a variety of things going on. Um, and the great thing about web is not just MVC, uh, is that actually every part of it uh, is basically a different language, right? Different different tools. And it creates this strong separation between uh, concerns that any developer uh, pretty much can write maintainable software from the very beginning. Um, on the other hand, we have this uh, typical desktop environment, uh, which was coming from like things like Java, Swing, GTK, Qt, um, where we everything we where we build everything with uh, pretty much like programming language, right? Uh, so there, uh, whenever you need to maintain a structure. Um, style sheets. Can you hear me, guys? I don't have any feedback from you. Oh, great. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, in, in this desktop environment, we kind of have things in a different way. And uh, because I spent so much time on developing web, uh, developing desktop style always felt like a bit of a drag because like code, the code structure itself always dense. You always need to take care of all the dependencies and orchestration you do pretty much on your own, which is great for some cases for some for someone. But when you switch between web and desktop, it's always like extra lot. You need to kind of be in two different mindsets. Um, so whenever, whenever we develop any, anything for web now, you clients want things on mobile as well, right? Because mobile traffic grows, you need to be pres present in there. And every time you work on a new project, uh, is basically the same question, like whether we go on a web or native. And uh, <clears throat> uh, despite all the merits of both sides, you kind of end up with hybrid applications, right? Um, which is a, like huge compromise and not really works uh, all the time. Like it's okay solution when you just need to present a bunch of buttons and images and some show some content. It works all right. Uh, but 
whenever you need to do actual like integration with operational system, like uh, access resources, like simplest things, uh, if you ever uh, developed with, uh, say, Cordova, uh, simplest things like in application payment is always huge pain in the neck because you need to create all this mapping between uh, native uh, operation system and web views, and it goes ugly really quickly. Uh, so then Ruby Motion appeared, right? And I got really excited about it because it's like 100% Ruby. And I'm a Ruby dev. I do Ruby like every day, 10 hours a day. And I thought, yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, and it compiles everything to native code, which is amazing. Uh, like the, the thing actually runs real application. It transforms all your code in actual bytecode of application. Mind-boggling. Uh -huh. I had a high, high hopes for it, I still, but in terms of like actual development process, it is still pretty much uh, desktop oriented, which is again fine completely uh, in many cases and like Challenge. Uh, I can hear you. Oh, really? Oh, actually, see, second. Oh, it actually did. Oh, is it back? Um, can you see my screen? Are we back? Keep going. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a, it is a pretty much like a classical case of uh, iOS development with a, like with Ruby Motion. Um, you develop everything in a desktop style development, and you can Google any answer, right? Uh, <clears throat> but unfortunately, if you are facing a challenge of building a native application as a web developer, the uh, learning curve can be pretty immense, right? It might take you like a few months before you can actually walk towards the distance and make the minimal things going. Uh, which made me thinking like, uh, in both uh, native and web development, we're basically dealing with the same exact issues. We're dealing with basically presenting content, handling uh, user uh, input, like click stops, everything. Everything is exactly the same. Uh, the difference is how we approach. Uh, the difference is actually on the cultural level. Uh, because in the web, we got used to certain uh, ways of dealing with things with CSS and HTML and JavaScript. We intuitively know where everything goes. Um, so when we get thrown to uh, desktop development environment, we often get overwhelmed and lost. And the learning process is not always worth it because you're learning to do exactly the same thing a uh, different way. Which made me thinking, like, now with Ruby Mesh, we have Ruby. And, and as Ruby developers, we're pretty much abstraction happy, right? So I thought we can kind of build something around it, right? Uh, consider this. Uh, what if we think of uh, tapping on an application on your application dashboard as uh, entering a URL in a browser, right? And then multiple screens on the inside of your applications, we can look at them as kind of like multiple web pages on the same website, right? 
So what if we treat a native application as a web application? They deal with exactly the same thing, and like we can pretty much map all concepts from native development to web and present um, and create this abstract environment which will let you develop native applications uh, with uh, your basically web developer toolkit. So as a web developer, you could just jump in and immediately understand what goes where. <clears throat> and the environment will be kind of like a web browser and a website compiled into a native app. Only there is no web browser, right? It's just abstract environment for you. You still it, this abstract environment lives uh, in parallel uh, with the actual operation system. It's just a thin wrapper around it. So whenever you feel like it, you can always call the system level. You can access file system, you can access network, um, whatever uh, like things operational system uh, provides you with, like, I don't know, uh, access to contacts, payments. Uh, this guy is the limit. So that might, uh, led me to build this project called Underos, or shortly UOS. <clears throat> Um, the best way to explain it and show it, uh, probably just to show uh, um, how it works. So I'll just build a small application uh, with Underos. It's available as a Ruby gem. Um, you just install gem install Underos, and it provides you with a template for uh, Ruby Motion. So you can just go in and create a motion project. Yep, totally. Is that good enough? Awesome. Uh, just specify the template and it will generate you the application. Let's make it a bit larger in here as well. So it is a kind of normal Ruby motion application. You have right file and in gem file, it just includes under us. Uh, but inside of application, we have extra things. We have a thing called layouts, which allows you to specify like every screen as a HTML page pretty much. And um, with normal HTML tags. And then you have styles with CSS and uh, pages which basically provide you with a uh, execution context for every screen. If you if you want, it's uh, pretty much UI uh, controller, UI view controller in iOS, one to one mapping, but we treat it as a web page. So you can just wreck it and it will build everything for you, like all dependencies and stuff. Uh, under OS itself is kind of modular. It uh, builds uh, things on top of uh, uh, Ruby gems. So it's uh, at the moment there are a few of them already. Uh, there is core which boots load things. There is a UI which handles like all this magic with CSS, HTML. There is a Ruby-like wrapper for HTTP, uh, which supports like sessions, and you you do uh, all, you can do all uh, interactions with network, uh, kind of like uh, Ruby style. Uh, in the end, it compiles it and uh, copies stuff over, and should I launch any second now. Here we go. Uh, so it's just one button, right? And uh, you can tap it, and it shows you alert, and as you see, the thing is uh, already mapped to uh, native uh, alert screens. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to build we're going to build a um, uh, calculator application. So we're going to need a bunch of buttons. Come on. Most of HTML tags, uh, tags are already mapped. So we have buttons, input fields, um, labels. Uh, numbers, now we need operations, like 
plus minus slash multiply. And we also need a uh, thing, the, the upper row like clear plus minus and um, percent. Uh, we will also uh, we'll have a label to show the result of our calculations on top of it, right? Um, can specify default value. Here we will need to uh, show some rows and numbers. Let me quickly fill them in. So that's the first row, and the second. Third rows. So five and columns, this one, two, three. It's all fours. Um, let's run it. So all these buttons, they are just on top of each other because we have one shared uh, CSS over here. <clears throat> Uh, I've got one prepared, so I'm not going to bore you to death with writing CSS. Uh, so, <clears throat> a bunch of uh, basically How about now? Uh, great. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I just copy pasted a bunch of CSS which I wrote before, so we can uh, rerun it now. Um, yeah. Um, Uh, I broke something probably in here. Uh, row one. Give me a second, I'll figure it quickly. Ah, oh, obvious. The column, column is wrong. <laughs> Uh, the third column, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, there's all fours, <coughs> specified run column. Uh, the zero button will have a double size. Uh, we also need to, uh, I also have a bunch of extra classes for operation buttons and some classes for upper row, right? That should fix all our problems. Did it come back? So uh, it, fi it fixes uh, all the buttons, but we don't see the labels, the label, uh, and here I want to show you a quick trick. Um, <clears throat> because it's all HTML and CSS, like virtual, uh, I have a little uh, helper called U. Uh, it's kind of like dollar in jQuery. You can just go in the console and type it. How about that? So um, I have a like global function called U. It's kind of like a dollar sign in jQuery. You can just uh, traverse your uh, page structure with it. Say find result label, right? And it will have uh, things like text uh, properties, style, 
and uh, you can assign uh, things like get get parameters or so set them like I don't know uh, 80. If you can see it moved, um, you can just specify like a hash in here, uh, like white 300 pixels, height 80. Um, Position top 80, uh, font size, um, say 80, uh, color white, uh, text align right, and that will magically apply. Uh, we support uh, most of the CSS uh, properties, right? Um, it's still like work in a progress, but uh, most of the essential things like geometry, fonts, uh, some shadows, uh, already borders uh, supported, so you can uh, manage pretty much things with CSS. Um, I have it right here already, I'll just uncomment it and it will, <clears throat> and it will look kind of right. Um, Let's make sure that I didn't broke anything. Uh, so um, now let's just connect buttons to things. And that's normally done in the pages. In the pages, you can again traverse again around your um, structure of your page. Uh, so you can find label, uh, result, right? First, label, result, come on. And then we can find all buttons and get each each button and assign um, the uh, top event listener to the every button. And it's done the same exact way we do it uh, in JavaScript on front end. You just specify on top and give it a callback. And in, instead of callback, we use blocks in Ruby. And there will be an event and we can handle it. Uh, just give it event, target, text. Target will point to the button which triggers the event and text is basically text of the button, the property of it. So here I'm just printing the uh, whichever button was uh, topped just to see that it all works. Um, <clears throat> now we can add some logic around it and make things actually work. And we will use some merits of Ruby because Ruby is awesome. Um, so when it's a number or say a dot, we just get our result text appended uh, to with the uh, pressed button. Uh, we probably also need to reset the text to empty string if uh, result is if its current if its current one is uh, zero. So it would be have a, like a normal calculator. We can type things in. Uh, when it's operation like plus, minus, uh, multiply or divide, we uh, firstly uh, store the operation itself. And then we store the first number. We also need to uh, <clears throat> make sure that if it's a first number, uh, then we need to, uh, after, after operation was pressed, we will need to reset the label and let the next number to be typed in. Um, 
No, it's it's a. Uh, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we start in the first number, uh, making sure that it gets erased for, for the next one, and then we handle things like equal, which will do calculations and probably clear button, which will reset stuff. All right. Let's write this to functions in here. Reset is simple. First number nil. Uh, result text empty. Um, calculate is basically like there are many ways to do that, but like I do the simple thing. Values uh, get the first number. Uh, and current text, and then just kind of wrote everything to floats and integers. Stupidest way I know. Number then value to f, else value to e, i. So we have uh, two numbers, and then uh, just get a result. Result is zero. All right, that will uh, basically create the result of calculations, which I can again feed back into the uh, result text. We need to convert it to strings because text eats strings. Um, that's pretty much it. Should have worked. Fingers crossed. Success. Uh, back to the presentation. Um, so why under us matters? Why do I do this in this way? Uh, firstly, it is web dev friendly. Uh, all, it transforms all the concept from um, native development to a web development. So any web dev can jump in and start making things quickly. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have to learn uh, about native applications. It just will make him go in quickly and make him write a uh, application with tool set he already familiar with. It's also Ruby friendly. As you noticed uh, in my little exercise, we haven't touched the uh, iOS API at all, like there is zero. We didn't do our logs, we didn't uh, call any we stuff from iOS, it's all pure Ruby, all nice initializers, so you can pretty much abstract everything from actual operation system. Um, it is independent, like unlike uh, say a browser or, and web development where we, where we have all this huge heritage of uh, web browsers with DOMs and like uh, different ways of dealing things. Um, we don't have it. It's kind of, it, we in control of this API. We can make this API webish uh, abstraction to behave uh, sanely, like uh, like say it was a browser uh, with jQuery built in, uh, like all same things already in there and available, and it's totally hackable. It's really right. Uh, so whenever Whenever you feel like it, like you need to change things, you don't need to kind of bang your head against the wall uh, and blaming like for doing weird things. You in control, you can always like change things in there. Um, monkey patch or make a jam, it's completely extendable. Um, iOS supports uh, easy extensions through Ruby gems. That's kind of like one of the goals of the project is to make it easy, easy extendable through Ruby gems. So, like, 
I already have a few gems in there in my projects, like, I don't know, five, six gems, and it's easy to make ones. And the big what if, uh, you all aware uh, for yesterday news uh, that Ruby Motion will support Android. <clears throat> Uh, my original goal was to make under uh, support both uh, iOS and Android uh, in the background, and I was going to use Android, uh, do Android with uh, a Rabutu project. If you know, there was a project uh, called Rabutu, which allowed you to run uh, Ruby on, under, on Android. But <clears throat> with this great news from uh, Hitbyte he and uh, announcement that Ruby Motion will support Android. It's now a clear path there. So we can create all this abstraction, which can uh, basically make you create a native application uh, with the same exact uh, code. Uh, it just in the background we switch engine uh, depending on the build. Uh, that's now pretty much a reality. We can get there. Um, and that's my whole talk. Um, the Andros project is on the web, it's on GitHub, it's fully opened, um, available for MIT license, and uh, that's my Twitter handle, shoot me a message, um, let me know.